One of the reasons that I love Tower of God, and trust me, there are many, is the fact that Tower of God has always been very consistent from the very beginning. There's always plot points that are being set up ever since like the beginning of season one that are still getting payoffs to this day. For example, ghosts showing up in season three, you know, like no one thought that was going to happen. We all thought, all right, ghost, his job was done. You know, SIU maybe forgot about his character, but no, SIU does not forget. Unless you're, you're, you're the minor characters from season one, because SIU definitely forgot about them. But despite all that, despite the credit that I give to, to that side of Tower of God and SIU, there were some changes made in the story and to some of the characters. If you go back and reread, you may not notice them, but they are there. These are very small details, sometimes large changes, but mostly small changes that were made throughout the story by SIU. I have five of them here. Let's do it. The first thing I have written down here is Lero Rose Design. Design. When you first meet Leiro Ro in the comic, particularly, he looks very different and acts very differently. He's more of a cutesy character with a fun, weird, wacky design, which is quickly changed pretty much in the course of one chapter. Now, you could argue that Leiro Ro was just acting kind of different and fair enough. But the main thing is just he looked very different. He looked like a very goofy character. He's pretty much the first ranker we've ever met in the story, aside from Yuri and Evan. And I think SIU at first was going for, yeah, more of like a wacky appearance. His legs looked like these, I can't even explain it. He looked like a praying mantis. You know what I mean? Like his legs were like expanded outward and combine that with his weird personality. He was a very goofy character. But then one, two chapters later, he's the Le Ro Ro we all know and love tall, a little more serious. I mean, he, the comic version of Le Ro Ro isn't afraid to be a little bit, you know, extroverted, especially when he's like announcing the games and stuff, which you see more in the comic. But even so, like in that, that first design of him is just so different. And if you look at it now, it's scarring. Like the difference is it's immense. So it definitely deserves being talked about. Um, yeah, that's number one. Okay, the second thing that I have is a little bit different and one that I just caught recently and it's a very odd one that I never knew about and I don't know why more people don't talk about it. Okay, well, I know why. It's because it's a character that nobody cares about. Sadly, it's Barrow Barrow. Now you might be like, what, what changed with Barrow Barrow? Like what was going on? Barrow Barrow used to have a tail. Now this really threw me off because I was like, I had to really look closely at this panel and be like, wait, is there someone behind her? You know, maybe another one of her teammates has a tail and they're just standing behind her or maybe it was like a mistake. But no, because we also see another panel of it later on. This is so weird because th there's no reason for her to have a tail. She's a normal human being, you know, a, whatever, with a tail. And it's just like, okay, okay, we've seen that before, but the designs are so different. We've seen a knock have a tail, but she's a literal green skinned lizard person. You know, there's been a monkey guy who has a monkey tail. That makes sense. It's, it's pretty rare that you see a regular person walking around with a tail and yet there you are with Barrow Barrow. It was the weirdest thing. I was actually doing a read with my, my fiance. She's actually reacting to Tower of God. If you want to see her reactions, you can check here and click the card. And I was reading with her and I was like, what the frick? You know, this threw me off so bad. Um, I'm guessing more people don't notice it because again, it's Barrow Barrow, uh, but it's still worth pointing out because that's a pretty massive change, not gonna lie. Okay, so this one, uh, <laughs> this one maybe doesn't count, but I do think it's worth talking about because it, it is a jarring change, especially if you look at the start in the finish. It, it is probably the only change though that can be explained in the story. It's not necessarily like SIU, you know, made a change and retconned something, like that's not the case. But it's Boro's character. And you might be like, okay, wow, Joe, you're really, you're really gonna use this opportunity to talk about Boro. And yes, yes, I am. Because when you first meet Boro, he's a soft-spoken, calm, silent badass. But the Boro we get to know and the one that leaves the group at the end of season two or start of season three is outgoing, extroverted, and goofy. And is kind of scared to fight. That's a 
big change. Okay, he's not scared to fight, but he is a little bit like, whoa, you know, he, he's always the one to react loudly to the things that's happening to them and, you know, running away, but not running away in, in fear, but like, you know, what do we do? What do we do? Like that kind of character. And that was not the Boro that we first met in the story. The first Boro was one who came up with the plan, was like, we're going to do this. And he knew what to do exactly when he... He cut a dude in half that was tailing him on the train, and he didn't even break a sweat, you know? Like, that was the Boro we first met, and the Boro we meet later on, his sworn enemy is something that scared him as a kid in a movie. He saw a movie as a kid that had a scary dinosaur or something, and that was his sworn enemy. Not Joaquin, the guy who murdered his friends and terrorized them on the hell train. No, it was the thing in the movie as a kid. That's the Boro that we know and love today. Now you could say, all right, he ended up regrouping with Sachi and that's why, you know, that's like the true Boro, but it's still like jarring. It's very jarring. Uh, I still love Boro even after the change is made, but I do kind of wish we got to see the badass side of him like amidst the, the comic relief side instead of just one or the other. That's, that's my opinion. All right, the fourth thing I have written down here is Yama's backstory. Yama as a character has been referenced and talked about ever since the workshop battle, maybe even sooner, but the first major uh, time was the workshop battle because Bay, not Baylord, uh, Baragov, right? Baragov was one of the three mad dog regulars who was introduced and he was sort of this like scary, intimidating figure who was gonna dominate the workshop battle alongside Viol. And so Yama was talked about, and we do actually get to see this cool panel of Karaka and Yama. And this is actually way before Yama was ever introduced. This is back during the workshop battle. He still had his red hair, you know? I think that's a really cool detail, but SIU uh, around this time, I think, or sometime during his, his writing of the story, he released the backstory of Yama, and he loves to do this for characters that haven't shown up, mostly like the legendary figures of the tower, you know, the 10 family heads and Grace Michelle Luzlek or, you know, the three lords, you know. He loves to um, release like little, little segments on them, and he did one for Yama. By the way, if you don't know who the three lords are, check out the video by clicking the card. Super interesting topic. But the backstory that SIU released on Yama was extremely different from the backstory that we know now. And it has been confirmed that SIU did retcon this. This was something he decided to change. This is no longer canon, but I have heard some people saying perhaps you could almost treat this changed backstory as maybe a rumor about Yama, which I think fits, but it is, you know, it still counts for the list because it is a big change. Basically, Yama was one of these caged like pit bulls or mad dogs in Bay Road, like this place, and he ended up being the only um, dog to escape and he ended up becoming a regular, climbing the tower, being chosen as a slayer, going back and killing his former master. The previous owner of the pit, he ended up coming back and basically taking over. And he became a slayer maybe even because of that. Maybe that was like his last requirement for being a slayer. That's what was theorized apparently. And there was another slayer that interfered and helped him with this, like Immort. Uh, we've heard that name before too. Immort is a slayer. Um, that was sort of the thing. He was called the Lord of the Dead. Yama, the Lord of the Dead. And he transformed Bay Road into this like crazy city where there was you know all these crazy things happening undercover crimes and drug routes and it was it was crazy and apparently he had never shown his face since becoming a slayer it's a very different Yama from the one we know and love today who's not afraid to show his face he's the king of the dogs you know and he's pretty much always has been aside from his brothers way long ago but that's sort of ancient history right uh that's the yama we know today a very different story so it definitely deserves talking about and it counts it definitely counts all right so the last change that i could think of that siu made in tower of god there might be more leave some in the comments below if there are the last change that i thought about was evan kell's gender because this is true siu did change evan kell's gender obviously evan kell the name evan kell has been mentioned a lot throughout the story particularly in season one because all of season one takes place on evan kell's floor you know evan kell's hell and that that name is mentioned a lot and the reason han sung is able to do the things that he does in season one is because Evan Kell is gone doing something. But Evan Kell is referred to by Lei Ro Ro in season one as Mr. Evan Kell. And he, he particularly uses those pronouns. He says, Mr. Evan Kell. And SIU has said that yes, 
he did or sort of picture or Evan Kell was a man before. You know, he was referred to as a man, he, etc., etc., even by SIU himself. SIU referred to Evan Kell as a he. And this is why people still say, oh, Evan Kell's a guy. What do you mean, Evan Kell? Stop calling her a she or, you know, whatever. Evan Kell's a guy. Evan Kell's not a guy, okay? I'll say it a hundred times because SIU has confirmed Evan Kell is a woman. Now, SIU has also said that there is some interesting things going on there. Maybe SIU is not, or maybe, <laughs> maybe SIU, maybe Evan Kell isn't a hundred percent female. Like there's something going on there. Perhaps the the sex curse that we know about with Yura and, and, and everything that happened there. If you don't know about the sex curse, again, check it out by clicking the card. Lots of lore videos here on the channel. There is something going on with Evan Kell and her gender, but she is referred to as a she, and any time that it's he is a mistranslation, like season two and season three, after we meet Evan Kell. And this is all confirmed by SIU. So if you have a problem with that, and you like to say he for Evan Kell, you're wrong, and that's facts. That's it though. I mean, I get the confusion because there are mistranslations even still with Evan Kell's gender. And of course, back in the day, you know, he, it was referred to, Mr. Evan Kell was referred to as Mr. Evan Kell and he, um, so I get it. I definitely get it, but it is confirmed. Evan Kell is a woman. But yeah, that's all I got. Uh, let me know if there are more changes in Tower of God that I wasn't aware of, that I didn't realize perhaps, because maybe I can make a part two to this video. I think that'd be pretty fun. I mean, SIU changes some things, but compared to other authors and other stories, there's almost nothing that is like retconned. You know, almost everything stays consistent. There's so much set up from the beginning, and it's so impressive how SIU manages to contain his story like that. I absolutely love it, and I respect that about him. So mad props to SIU. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more of that daily content. Partially Tower of God, partially Webtoon, but mostly Tower of God. Um, and yeah, if you want to stick around and support me on Patreon, that'd be great too. I'm releasing more early access videos there um, going into the further weeks here now that I'm back from my trip. And these patrons are amazing. Thank you all so much for your support as always. If you become a ranker, you can actually suggest videos, which is very fun. Or a high ranker, excuse me. You can suggest videos for me to talk about if you have a particular topic or whatever. So it's a lot of fun here. We also have a Discord server, so stick around if you're enjoying the content. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God discussion video. Take care.